Good afternoon. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, we're going to continue this study of the midst of the week that we began last evening. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the Sabbath and for the fellowship that we can have with one another and with you. We pray for our brethren and sisters all over the world who are studying truth, present truth, and seeking to understand your will for them. We just pray that you can be with them, that your angels can watch over them, and that you can give us strength to obey your voice. We invite your presence here into this study as we behold Christ hanging between heaven and earth, and we attempt to understand the symbolic significance as it relates to this present time. Help us, Lord, to understand these things that we are studying, that they may change us and help us to be able to understand them so that we can share them with others as hearts are receptive. Be with us now through thy spirit, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, happy Sabbath again. Now, this study on the midst of the week, as I talked about last night, I had first presented it. That is, I had developed this study uh, beginning in, uh, I think it was in May of 2018. I started to look at Samuel Snow's letters and especially the letters that related to the midst of the week. And I started to think about this, so I began to put the literal days of the week in the period from Christ's baptism to the stoning of Stephen um, because I had the tools to do so. Now it's much easier because we have the calendar converter, but back then I had to figure first how the biblical calendar worked and how to lay it out and then to look at the days. Um, as I continued uh, to progress in that study, it was in July um, of 2018 that I, I really put this study together. I put together some notes, and we had a camp meeting from August 6th to 11th in Alberta, and I presented on each of those days on the week of Christ's study. That study contained, um, well, actually I did things on Ezra chapter uh, 10 to 7 as well, and then the study on the midst of the week. And then that study was um, presented along with the book of Ezra to understand uh, the week of Christ. That was from September 11th to 22nd at the, at the School of the Prophets in Arkansas. And then I presented at Lambert Church on September 23rd, 2000, let me see, I'm getting this wrong. I presented, I didn't present, the. it was in 2018, pardon me, I'm getting these two years mixed up. So in 2018, I presented uh, this in a study. Um, right, so now I'm, I'm, I'm confused myself about when I presented these things. So that was in 2018, not 2017. So I presented this in 2018. In 2017, I presented the structure of prophetic chronology. In 2018, when we were there, I presented uh, this study on Ezra and the midst of the week, and then it was part of the camp meeting study. Uh, so these are the notes that I had developed uh, for that camp meeting. So now I got it straight. So this study here, the problem that I had when I presented this for um, at the camp meeting in Arkansas is that uh, people didn't really grasp what I was doing. And so I'm going to, I've presented this more often. At the time, if you look at my notes, you're going to see that I'm using the Julian Day numbers because it was prior to um, Troy developing the calendar converter, which he has let us use and we've adapted it. Um, as well with our calendar converter. It's basically developed by Troy. 
And um, so at that time, we didn't have that. So I was working these things out. I was using Julian day numbers to count spans of time. And we started looking at this a little bit last night, but I'm going to draw this out. So we know that if Jesus is crucified in the midst of the week, that that week is going to be a period of seven years, right? Three and a half of them are going to be on earth. That is, he's confirming the covenant with many for one week, as we looked at. And three and a half are going to be in heaven. Now, we, we're using the cross here as this marker because Jesus is going to die. Obviously, he's not going to be in heaven when he dies. He's going to have to wait uh, until he's resurrected. Then he's going to go to his father. Then he's going to come back to earth. And then he's going to ascend to heaven. But just in a simplified way, we look at it this like this. And we know this is 27 AD, right, and 34 AD, which makes this 31 AD. This is well understood. We know this is then the fall, and this is the fall, and this is the spring. Spring of 31 AD. He's crucified at the time of the Passover. Now, because of our study and understanding of the midst of the, of, of the tenth day of the seventh month in, eight, in 457 BC, we know that this is going to be the tenth day of the seventh month in 27 AD, and this is going to be the tenth day of the seventh month in 34 AD. And this is going to be the 14th day of the first month in 31 AD. Now, if I just took this as 30 days to a month and 360 days to a year, this would not be equal, right? Because this is the 10th day, this is the 14th day, and the months would be equal. So if I was going to count from the 10th day of the 7th month to the 10th day of the 1st month, how many days would that be if the months were 30 days? A way to simplify this is we're going to say this is 42 months, right? And this is 42 months. And how many days are there in 42 months? On the, if we think about the prophecies in Revelation that deal with the 1260 days, the time times, and the dividing of time also referred to as 42 months. So how many days are in 42 months? Right, it's just simply 42 times 30 equals 1260. But if this is on the 10th day of the 7th month, and this is the 14th day of the 7th month, how many days would this be if we were using pro a prophetic year of um, 25, 20 days? So if we were t saying this is 25, 20 days, how many days would this be on this side? If this is the 10th day of the seventh month and this is the 14th day of the first month, okay, I have 1260 plus four. Does that make sense? Because this is the 10th day and this is the 14th day. Right. There's 42 months plus four days. Okay, I've got it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right? So if I add four days, it'll equal 1264. And on this side, I have 32 months, but it's less four days, right? right. So this is going to be 1256. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so even if we take this idea that we're going to be using a prophetic year and prophetic months, a year of 360 and a month of 30, it wouldn't equal 20, 1260 and 1260. Okay. Right? That's, that's just a reality if we're doing that. Unless we said... Well, this is, he's going to be baptized on the 14th day of the seventh month. 
And then, you know, the stoning of Stephen is going to have, happen on the 14th day of the seventh month. Right? Right. So people have used this, this idea. Well, they say there's 1,260 days, and so there's 1,260 morning and evening offerings to make 2520 offerings, right? People have made this claim, but they haven't thought it through. Now, we know, of course, that's not how the biblical calendar works, that the days alternate between 29 and 30 days, and there's slightly more 30-day months than 29-day months because the month is 29 and a half and a little bit more days longer, right? It's not 30 days, it's not 29, it's 29 and a half, and it's not even 29 and a half and exact. It's 29.5305. Um, At the present time, in ancient times, it was 29.530594. That's a difference of, of seconds, right? So it's changed in a few seconds in the last... Uh, two or three thousand years. So, so when we look at this week of Christ, we know that's not the reality. Okay? That's not, that's not the number of days in the week of Christ. So we know that seven years, if we were to do solar years, it's going to be a different number than if we do biblical years. Now, we have... Here, a chart, and can you blow it up a little bit? I don't know if people can really see this. It's, it's got a lot of dates. If you blow it up, they'll, they'll get bigger. They'll get bigger, but they'll get closer together too. And so, um, hopefully, people can see this. You could probably make it slightly bigger. I know it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay. Now, what I've done is I put all of these dates from 27 A.D. Uh, all the way to 70 A.D. So I have this, this date at the beginning. That's the first day of the first month. It doesn't show you that. So um, I'm going to write these dates out for you. But uh, this is more actually for me, so I can remember them all. But if we look at this period of time, we're going to go all the way to 70 A.D. So we're going to have a date in 70 A.D., and we're going to have dates in 27 AD. So the first day of the first month, I'll do it like this. But, so this is 27 AD, and this is going to be the first day of the first month, right? Now that date on the Julian calendar is going to be March 28th. Okay? So. This, in the year that Jesus is baptized, you're going to have this March 28th date. And then you're going to have uh, the next date is going to be um, a date that's, that we don't often look at. Well, I'll put this other date first. I'll put the 10th day of the first month first. Or the 10th day of the seventh month, pardon me. So I got the 10th day. The tenth day of the seventh month. So we have the tenth day of the seventh month. This is still 27 AD. And this date we looked at last night is September 30th, 27 AD, right? So it's the tenth day of the seventh month. Now the number of days between the first day of the first month and the tenth day of the seventh month is how many days? So it's, it's, it's 187 inclusive days. But it's 186 cardinal days. That is, if I start at zero as being the first day of the first month, that means the second day of the first month is one, and I count all the way, and when I get here, this will be 186. But if I count this as the first, this will be the 187th. So this is the 187th day of the year, right? And we have that symbol of July 18th there. 186 also substitutes for it. Okay? That is, they really are the same period, just expressed in different ways. Now, the other date that I'm going to place here is the date for the stoning of Stephen. 
right? So we're going to place this here. We're going to have the 10th day of the 7th month in 34 AD. And this is going to be October 12th in 34 AD, I believe. Yeah, October 12th. And um, this is, as we looked at last night, uh, well, maybe we didn't look at that last night. We looked at this somewhere. How many days are there from the 10th day of the 7th month to the 10th day of the 7th month from 27 to 34 AD? 2,569. Yeah, right. Yes. So the cardinal count is 2,569. The ordinal is 2,570. Okay. So that means if this is the first day, this is the 2,570th day, right? So learning how to count was one of the, the things that happened in biblical chronology because we often just count and we don't really think about it. We don't really think about how we're looking at counting uh, days or spans of time. And that confuses people quite a bit. So anyway, we have these number of days here. Now, we know that the cross of Christ is going to happen in the middle, but it's not going to be exactly in the middle. Right? So we got the cross here, and we know that Jesus is crucified on April 27, which is the 14th day of the first month in 31 A.D., now, when originally I had di done this, I didn't have a biblical calendar converter. I had to figure out how the biblical calendar worked. I had to figure out the number of days. So I'd have to look at the moon each month on an astronomical program, uh, an ephemeris. And, and there I would figure out, okay, they would have seen the new moon here. This would have been then the first day of the year. And I could count... 3029 for the first six months, and then I knew the 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and if there was a 13th month, they could be 29 or 30, right? That's the way that I did it at that time. And so, so I figured out that when Jesus was crucified, it was a Friday in 31 AD. It was April 27th. And, um, but then I wanted to look at the actual number of days. So when I looked at the actual number of days... I found on this side, if I counted 1260, I would come to October 8th in 34 AD. Right? So I didn't come to this. That is, there was 1260 plus 4 to get to the 10th day of the 7th month. Now, uh, this doesn't really show the biblical dates on this on the left side or the top along the top. It doesn't show the biblical dates. It shows the Julian dates. But you can see if I look at the uh, April 27th, 31 AD, and you can see it's the zero in the middle of the chart. You can see, if, you can see that you're counting from there. And if I count 1260, it's going to come to October 8th. And if I count 1264, it's going to come to... October 12th, 34 AD. Now, when I'm doing this, you can see I'm actually using a cardinal count on this side, but I'm not using a cardinal count on the other side. That is, you can see when I count on the other side, it says 1259. So at the time when I was trying to sort through this, um, and I'm not that concerned about the side on the right, I was more concerned about the side on the left. That is, I'm more concerned about this period here, as you'll see why. But one of the things that we, we could note here is that if I look at this side and I'm going to count uh, 1,259 days or 1,260, that is, I'm, I'm going to do an ordinal count from here, that I'm going to come to November 15th. So I have here November 15th. Um, which is going to be, I can't remember the day of the month on the biblical calendar, but this is 27 AD. And this would be a 1260-day count, but it's not a cardinal count. That is, I'm counting ordinally. So this date here 
is, is an ordinal count. And then how many days between September 30th and November 15th? If you were going to count, how would you do that? 46. Okay, you have 46, because there's 31 for, for October, right? And then you add the 15 in November, so 31 plus 15 is 46. So this is 46. So the first thing I recognized when I did this count is that this was like the prophetic mirror that we have for the 2520, right? So if I'm taking this, the cross, as 538 AD, right? Then this would be 1798, and this would be 1844, correct? So I presented this, and a, a lady noticed. She says, well, you have the 10th day of the seventh month lines up with 1844, right? So you have a, a year on the bottom, which is going from right to left, like how Hebrew is written. And then you have a date on the top going from left to right. And 1844, the tenth day of the seventh month in 1844, that's going to be October 22, right? So, so obviously it's a different date in different years. And this is, of course, a Gregorian calendar. This is a Julian but you can see that I can take this in 1844, the tenth day of the seventh month is October 22. Okay. And then she asked a question, and the question was simply, could we do this with other years? That is, could we take other years and um, find a date? Now, we read Daniel chapter 9 last night, right? Daniel chapter 9, verses 26 and 27. Now, when he talks, Angel Gabriel, talking to Daniel, when he talks about the 70 weeks and Christ being cruci crucified in the midst of the week, what other event does he talk about? The destruction of Jerusalem. So, well, I said, well because this is in a study, I said, well, the destruction of Jerusalem is the date that I would look for, and if we could find the destruction of Jerusalem, and it happened to be the same year and date that Jerusalem was destroyed, then this would confirm what we're doing, right? So I hadn't yet done that. I hadn't looked at the destruction of Jerusalem. Now, I wasn't really sure at that time what date on our calendar the destruction of Jerusalem occurred. If you look on Wikipedia, they're going to give you some weird date that makes no sense. I, I can't even understand how they choose that, that date. When, when you read about, um, they're going to have a date, I think it's in September or something like that. And I'm not sure what calendar they're doing. Maybe they've fixed it since then. But when I looked at it back then, they had some, some other date. But I knew from Josephus, I knew the biblical date. And I knew the biblical date, and I knew the year, right? So Jerusalem's going to be destroyed in 70 AD, right? So um, these, are, these are all AD dates, right? So these, you're going to come into BD, BC dates. But for now, this is an AD date. And so um, I'm just going to go here, put 70 AD. Right? And how many years are there between 70 AD and 538? So if you took 538 and you subtract 70, you get what? 468. Yeah, 468. Okay? So there's 468. And so I just said, well, I'm just going to count 468, right? And, and so what I did is I used a, um, it was just some kind of calendar thing 
you know, I wasn't using, I wasn't using a calendar converter, just some kind of calendar program, and I counted the number of days. Now, when I did this, I just counted 468 cardinal days, and I, and I think I came up to uh, August 7th, right? So, whatever it was, August 7th. I think that was the date. And now, when I do that, of course, in this program, if I'm counting 468 days, I'm not actually getting to uh, 70 AD because in this date here, what, are the, what is this? This is 27 to 34, right? Right? So I'm actually counting in a program that's going to give me a date in 34 AD, right? So it's going to give me a date in 34 AD. So I'm going to have a date here that lines up with this, and it's going to be, I can't remember if it's August 6th or 7th that I found. I think it was August 7th. It's going to be the 10th day of the 5th month in 34 AD, right? So Jesus is, you know, Jesus is crucified in 31, so obviously 468 days isn't going to bring me to 70 AD. It's going to bring me to 34 AD because this here, this is 34 AD. 70 AD is over here, right? But 70 AD, it's going to be on the 10th day of the fifth month. And it's going to be August 6th. Okay? So at the time, I wasn't really sure about how to do this. But what I did notice is that if I looked at 70 AD, it gave me, in, as I counted this out, it gave me the 10th day of the fifth month. So I, I can't remember how I did it. But I said, well, that's amazing, right? I mean, this is exactly what we were looking for. We were looking for 70 AD. That is, it's going to be 34 AD, but it's going to be the year 70 AD on this line, right? Because this line has a lot more years than this has years, right? And it's going to be uh, August 6th or 7th, right? It ended up being August 7th, um, though I know now it, it actually was August 6th because as I started to work through this, I started to realize that, that I had a problem. That is, if I put a zero year here, like, do we have a zero year BC and AD? No. And so I had to figure out where am I going to put, where am I going to, am I going to have a zero year in this or am I just going to get rid of the zeros completely? Right? And where would I do that? Right? I mean, technically, I guess you would, you would have it over somewhere here where you go from BC to AD. But all I need to know is that when I count from here to here, when I count from April 27th, 31 AD, I'm going to count an ordinal count to get to this date. Right? So when I count an ordinal count, it's going to give me August 6th in 34 AD, right? And if I look on the Babylonian calendar in 70 AD, in 70 AD, August 6th is going to be the 10th day of the fifth month. So this gives me August 6th, and this gives me August 6th. And now, now they didn't have to give us the same Julian date, right, in order for them to work. It just needed to be the 10th day of the fifth month. But why is this also August 6th, 10th day of the fifth month, and this August 6th, the 10th day of the fifth month? Why are they both the 10th day of the fifth month? It's not usually that way. How often is it on, av on average it's that way one ev once every 30 years? But generally, every 19 years, we have a thing called the Metonic Cycle, and the solar calendar and the biblical calendar the lunar solar calendar, a line, right? And how many years is it from 34 AD to 70 AD? It's 36, right? So you're going to have 36 um, from 34 AD. Um, pardon me, that's what I did wrong. It's 32 AD. There we go. <laughs> now we're looking at 32 AD because that didn't make any sense. From 32 AD, because this is 34, this is 32.
from 32 AD to 70 AD, it's 38, right? And if you take 38 and you divide it by 2, you get 19. So this is two metonic cycles. So even when we think about this, the very fact that not only am I getting the 10th day of the fifth month when I count the number of days from here, so we're going to take 538 as the cross, and we can see why. It's the 30 years of the papacy, you know, 508, right, to 538. And then you're going to have um, the fact that you're going from BC to AD. So we're going to count an ordinal count. We come to 70 AD, right? So here I, I'm, in a sense, counting at the end of 538, to the beginning of 70 AD. So you can see if you just did this, here I'm doing like, it looks like I'm doing cardinal math. But I'm not counting, I'm counting ordinally from the end of something. Right? Does that make sense? And so here I get August 6th. But the chances of this happening, that I get the metonic cycle between these two dates, two metonic cycles, and I get, which is going to give me the two August 6th dates, and I get the biblical date of the 10th day of the fifth month, is highly unlikely. So what I recognized is what I had done is seeing that first we have these years that can now be marked because of the prophetic mirror, and I could mark more dates, right? That is, what, what would be the next date? If this is 1798 and this is 1844, what can I do here? And this is like a day for a year, right? So one day equals one year, but going the opposite way. So what would be the next date I would want to look at going this way from 1844? Okay, so I'm going to go 19. See, and here now I'm just counting, you know, cardinal. I'm not going to do ordinal every time. And I'm going to come to this date, uh, September 11th in 27 AD, right? So I have September 11th. And I can't remember what biblical date it is, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter at this point because I can, I can count the biblical calendar if I want to. I just don't have it on that program and I don't remember it. Um, but we can see September 11th. Now, is that significance when we get to 1863 that we get September 11th? Yeah. yeah, okay, William. Yeah, this is in 32 AD on the top part, on the top part, because this is April 27th, 31 AD, and I'm going to count 467 days from the end of this, and it's going to bring me to August 6th, 32 AD. I'd written 34 by accident. Right, on the top is days going from left to right, and on the bottom is years going from right to left. And so, and the reason why I saw this is because I saw that 538 represents the cross in the counterfeit line, the satanic 2520. Because this is Christ's 2520, it's his covenant week, and this is the satanic covenant week, part of it, right? This is the part dealing with the papacy. So, so I'm looking here at this 538 to 1798. And, and then I see that it's 46 years to the 10th day of the seventh month. And I'm saying, well, that reminds me of the prophetic year or the prophetic mirror, right? So then I count 19 more years to get that 65 years at the end of the prophetic mirror. And I get September 11th. And now September 11th, we know we count from September 11th to 9-11, right? 
And how many years is that? So I'm just going to put in here 9-11. It's going to be 126, or pardon me, uh, from September 11th to 11-9. That's what I want to go to first. So from September 11th to 11-9, how many years is it? So this is, I should do it on the bottom. So I'm going to go here, uh, 11 9 89. It's 126, right? So I can count 126 days, and I didn't put it here on this chart, uh, but I could have, I just didn't. Um, let me see, what did I put here? So, yeah, so I put the September 11th one, but I didn't put this one. But, but we know that we count 126, and we're going to come to November 9th, 1989. But these ones... I mean, you, you can see that what we're doing is a day for a year, since this is a year uh, going this way, and these are days going this way. I can just go a day for a year. And you can see, if I go to the first day of the first month, that it's going to bring me to what year? Um, what's, a, what's 1844 plus 186? I'm going to count from, from here, 186 years, right, 186 days. So, okay, so this is the 2030 date, which we're going to look at uh, more this evening. But you can see that this chart shows that from 1844, that it's 186 years to 2030. So just going to put 2030 over here. Now... In this chart, when I did it, I noticed that there was a 2030 and that the date in 2030, that is the first day of the first month, is April 5th. Right? So I, I put that in my notes back in 2018, but I didn't really um, pay attention to it. I just, I noticed, I felt that was as far back as I could go, and which is as far forward as we can go with this line, right? I didn't feel that I could continue uh, placing dates this way, way into the future. I felt, well, the only, as far as we can go is back to the first day of the first month in 27 AD. Right? And so we've developed and built upon this over time. Now, there's still questions about you know, how I count. People sometimes get confused, and I get confused with this. But the the main thing that I want to show you is that when I'm looking between a date such as um, we're going to have a date here. So over here, it's going to be this, this line here, 11, 15, 27. And you're going to see I have the number 2519. That is from the, when, when I have this cross here in the middle, I'm going to have to count 1260 here and 1260 here, and it's got to add up to 2520 days. But it's got to be 2520 complete days, not 2520 and 1, or 25, 25, uh, uh, 25 19. Now, do, if I do a cardinal count from here, from this date here, so this is 1260 and this is 1260, um, so these dates here, this is going to be 2520 inclusive. Do, do you understand what I'm doing here? Why, why am I making it 2520 inclusive and not 2520 cardinal? I mean, I could have just done a cardinal count. I could have done 1260 on either side, cardinal. And, but I'm going to have, when you look on the chart, it says 2519. That means it's 2520 inclusive. So why didn't I do just so that it was 2521 inclusive? Why did I do it this way? Can you think why, why I would want to have it this way? 2520 complete days or complete years, not part of years. 
does that make sense what I did? Should I have it had, should I have made it so this is, because people have argued with me and they said, you did this wrong, you know, this should be November 14th and this should be September 29th and this should be September 12th and this should be, um, you know, this would be, end up being, Yes. See, that, that's the reason I did it that way, because I felt, well, we don't have a zero year. Now, maybe my thinking's wrong, but since we don't have a zero year, I have to account for that. Right? That, that was sort of what I was doing. I'm saying, yeah, we don't have a zero year, so how do we account for that? And so uh, the way that I wanted to do it was whole days, because I tried to do it other ways, and it was confusing. I mean, I got very confused trying to count these things out to be precise, right? It, it wasn't simple. I didn't have the tools that we have now. If I would have had the calendar converter, you know, I, I would have had an easier time of it. But you can see on the one hand, I have 1260, and then I also have 647. So I seem to have kind of mixed things up. And that's why I'm not sure about the August 8th or the August 7th date, right? So we're not really certain about how to work it. So it, it's something I, I need to work on still so that we can come to a consensus about this. But what we did is we did find that this is confirmed with the 10th day of the fifth month. So this is highly unlikely. The fact that I'm just going to arbitrarily take, um, well, it's not arbitrary, but I'm going to take a period of time and I'm going to say it's got to line up with one of the days of the year. What's the odds of that? It's one in 365, right? And then if it's going to line up again, also on our calendar, that's multiplied by 30. So you'd multiply 365 by 30, and that would be the odds of those dates aligning in this way, right? That I'm going to come to a date that is 38 years, so that it's going to line up with the metonic cycle, because even though there's 19 years, on average, it's going to be 30 because there's going to be years that the metonic cycle doesn't work um, so that it lines up with the same date in 70 AD and 32 AD with both calendars, right? Yeah, so you would get that number that you get with the, the shibboleth. Yeah, you know, the shibboleth? You know, you have that number. You know, you're multiplying 365 by 30. Yeah. So you have that number in that 30 years. What number is it? Uh, 10,957. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, this is 38 years, right? But you're saying that if we multiply, yeah, so that would be 365 and a quarter, right? That is, the odds that, that we're going to get this result is 365 and a quarter times 30, right? And we know that that number is 10,957 because that's the number that was produced by adding uh, 7641 plus 3316, right? That's the number we get. So that was taking Jephthah's name, the 3316, and Shibboleth 7641, adding them together, and this is the number we got. So that is the odds. Now, what are the odds that the odds <laughs> are uh, the number Shibboleth and Jephthah together that we just found out recently that we have put together and we have in our notes and that we presented? I don't know what the odds are that the odds are this, but I would think that the odds... We would just multiply the odds by the odds. This would be the odds squared. That's the probability, right? <laughs> you see what's happening here. Um, no, you don't hate to bother me, but anyway, you can. <laughs> So between September, 
between um, and and what I should so this is this is 1863, right? Between 1863 and 1989 is 126 years, right? So between September 11th and whatever date this is, so somebody can just figure that out. What's the date? It, I don't have it on that chart. So this would be 126 days before September 11th, 27 AD. That's going to be line up with 1989, right? This, it's not going to be that date here, right? It's going to be, yeah, so it's going to be, what, four months, so um, it's going to be in May sometime, right? It's uh, May, the 8th, 8th of May. In May the 8th? In the Julian. Okay, so May 8th in 27 AD. Okay, so, but that's going to line up. So you, you, it would be impossible to have every date line up with every significant date. The one that matters the most is this one because in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 to 27, it talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. So that's the date I need to confirm that this literal week of Christ, this where we have Christ crucified in the midst, this literal week of Christ is correct. And it's correct with this 10,957 10, squared. That's the probability that this would happen by accident, right, in this way, right, with all of the things involved. Have you uh, considered 1888? Yeah, I considered 1888. I looked at all. What's 1888 say? In the Gregorian calendar, it's the 15th of August. Oh, okay. And so, 17th in the Julian. Okay, so yeah, so if we put 1888 in here, it's going to be another 25 years. And it's the uh, 25th day of the fifth month. The 25th of the sixth? The fifth month, 25th day. Okay, 525. In the biblical. So yeah, so we, we haven't done these, but if you took in this chart and you put in 1888, it's going to be on the Gregorian calendar in 27 AD. It's going to be... Uh, August 15th? Yes. Yeah, so that's going to be August 15th, and that's a significant date. And then on the biblical calendar, it's going to be the fifth month, 25th day, right? So you can see there's all kinds of symbols here, but the one that has to match up is this one, because this matches up with the significant date in 1844, that this is all about, right? And this one matches up with the significant date in 70 AD. So, so we have here a witness that this is correct. And what we've used, we made a prediction, right? So hopefully people understand that. I have more in the notes where I go through and look at this. Um, the notes are a little bit confusing because at the time I was just developing understanding this. But with what the skills we have, the calendar converter, people can go back and examine these things and see if what I did was correct. And, and some people have said, you've done it wrong. And then I've responded to them on YouTube, and you can see them and some of my studies on the midst of the week. And, and I clearly show that they didn't understand what I was doing and that they have problems with the way they're doing it. So, so there, there might be there might be some refining of this in some way in how we understand it. But we made a prediction. That is, um, now the first thing that I did after this, so after I had all of this, I wanted to confirm this. Now I need to clean this up. <clears throat> but, but you get the idea of how this works. So I'm going to do this again because we don't need all of this now. And this relates to something that Stephen was doing in 2018. Right, so in 2018, Stephen predicted November 9th, 2019, using a system where he took the time that Christ spent in the holy place, right? So he's going to count from, and I can't remember the date, it's June something in uh, 
31 AD. So June, do you remember the date? This is going to be when Christ ascends, or not ascends. This is going to be Acts chapter 2, right? That's when the Holy Spirit is being poured out on the disciples in Acts chapter 2. Christ is beginning his work as our high priest in the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. So once he goes up to heaven, those first 10 days, I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's preparing for this work. And then when he pours out the Holy Spirit on the disciples, he begins, he inaugurates his work in the holy place. And so Stephen is going to count from this date, which is Pentecost, right? It's the sixth day of the third month. So um, when the, yeah, it's uh, June 17th. June 17th in 30, 31 AD. And it's going to be the sixth day of the third month. It's Pentecost, right? Yes. Okay. And then he's going to count the number of days. So we'll just do it this way. Okay. So he's going to go over here. And he's going to count the days to October 22, 1844. Well, he's not really going to do it that way. He's going to say... There's 360 prophetic days in a year, but Christ is going to spend one of them of those days on the Day of Atonement. That is, you have the high priest, you have the Day of Atonement, and one of those days is going to be not in the holy place, but in the most holy. And, and he just used the prophetic year, right? So he says, I'm going to have three, 359 days times 1844, right? Well, that wasn't how I done it. What? So that... I, just, I just counted the number of days. Oh, you just counted. And okay. then divided it by 359. Okay, so the number of days was 663,000... 662314. 662314. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. I just checked. I know that you're going to end up with... That's correct, yeah. You need a 318 somewhere, but anyway. Yes. Well, that, uh, so then you just divide that by 359. Okay, so we divide this by 359. So I guess we just go like this. And then we get... So it's 1844 plus like a decimal. Which is 318 days. So 318 days would then, yeah, the decimal equates to 318 right. days in a year. Yeah, so it's 1844 years plus 318 days, right? Now, so that brings us to October 22nd, 1844. So that's the period of time between these two events. 662,314. If we divide it by this shortened prophetic year by one day, we get this number. And I'm not going to go into all the niceties of this, but the thing that was interesting, he says, if you take the Days of Atonement, there's going to be 1844 Days of Atonement, and if you count 1844 days, it gives you November 9th, 1849. And of course, we don't have November 9th, 2019 yet at this point when Stephen does this study. Now, he also uh, understands the 30 years from November 9th, 1989 to November 9th, 2019. And for you, I guess this kind of is like a confirmation about that 30 years, right? Is that sort of what you're looking at? The 30 years of the priests. So that's confirming it. Now, now Tess is going to have the same date. You're not, when you're doing this, you're not going to say this is the close of probation. What did you really say about it back in 2018 before... Yes. Yeah. Well, you I got was, your mic on. Yes. Okay. So oh, you I, got that mic. <laughs> so uh, there was an Elamite statement that um, she says that had the Millerites accepted the third angel's message and sort of done the work that they were supposed to do, and that Lord, the Lord would have came hear mm -hmm. this. And so I had the idea that that could have been sort of typifying that sort of the cl close of probation, you know or you know, related to that there, the Lord coming. 
So within, so that would be, yeah. So I had an idea of, for November 9th, 1849, as being that, but it wasn't really serious. It was just sort of saying, this could have been the day the Lord came, you know, or, or sort of yeah. close the probation anyway. Now you gave it to Jeff, right? Well, initially I gave it to Perminder. And, oh, okay. And he didn't reply. He didn't reply, okay. <laughs> and then you gave it, that's weird that he didn't reply because you had a November 9th date. But um, then you gave it to Jeff, and, and he presented it at the camp meeting in Alberta. Um, I think it was the first day, probably August 6th or something like that. It was in August anyway, the first week, because camp meeting was 6th to 11th. And I can't remember if Jeff was there the whole time. Uh, I think he was, but... Yes, um, but he didn't, pick, he didn't mention the November 9th? No, he didn't mention the November 9th. So, now, so I did something similar uh, to this. Um, so what I did is, is I'm going to count from this October uh, 22, 1844 date, but I'm going to count back here, and I'm going to have over here the week of Christ, right? So I'm going to have that week over here, and I'm going to count um, 663,840 days because that is going to be um, 360 times 1844, right? So I'm going to add 1844 days to yours on the other side of things, right? So you put the 1844 days on this side. I'm going to put my 1844 days on this side, right? And, and I did this in my head, lying in bed. Um, Parminder was going to present that morning in the morning class. And, and I think I started about 1 o'clock in the morning thinking about this. And, and I was pretty sure, I didn't get up out of bed to check until you know, it was time to get up. Um, but I just kept thinking about it. I kept thinking about this. Is my mic working? It's cutting out. Okay. How's that? That's better? Okay. It might be the cord or something. So anyway, I was thinking about this, this uh, span of time. And so in the morning class, I presented this because I was sitting there in the morning class figuring it out. I got up, had breakfast, and I was looking at my computer trying to figure out this date. Now, the date that it came up to was, um, you know, first I'm going to look on the biblical calendar. I'm going to find this date. And it's going to be the 17th day of the first month. And in my mind, I was kind of thinking... Yeah, I'm not sure why we're getting that cutting out. I think it's lining up to the 17th day of the first month, but I wish it would line up to the 16th day of the first month. So is, is it, you think it's my cord? Dudes? Yeah, because my son James says it happens sometimes. Okay, so, but as long as you can hear me, I'm not cutting out too badly. If I am, I could use the other mic. Okay, well, let's do that. Okay, so, sorry about that. So, <clears throat> Parminder was going to present. I, I recognized in my mind it was probably the 17th day of the first month, and it was. So it's the 17th day of the first month, and the year I knew that it would line up with was 2014. So, now what's the significance of 2014? Especially if you're thinking back in 2018, what were we thinking about 2014? What is the history of that? Well, Perminder. Okay, in 2014, 
we had Parminder who had made a prediction, right? So this is Parminder's Sunday law prediction, which uh, didn't pan out. But it was where we had the division in the movement, right? So, so this date becomes significant in as far as in a line of predictions. So it's the first time setting that we had in the movement. So it's 2014. Now we also know then that this, if we go over here, and this is um, uh, 1863, that this is going to be this 151 shekels, right? So remember we had the 126 shekels, it brought us to 1989, and then we added that extra because we can take either 50 shekels to a manna or 60. So we took the one from Ezekiel 42, verse 12, and we then had uh, this uh, count of 150, 151 shekels. So these shekels are days, right? But they're also years. So I would be counting from here that September 11th date in 27 AD. And I would just be counting over here back 151. And this is going to be um, here. It's going to be April 13th in 27 AD. So you know this, of course, this is 27 AD, but it's pointing to uh, in the week of Christ uh, to a date that we can mark in 31 AD, right? So this is sort of another step that confuses people. That is, we're saying that Christ has a week in which he is crucified. And that week is in 31 AD, right? So it's over here. But what we're saying is that these dates here can represent dates in this week over here. Because the 17th day of the first month is the day after the resurrection, right? In 31 AD, the first day of the first month occurs as well as the 14th day. So if I count over here, three more days and I get to the 14th day of the first month, this is going to be the cross, right? Now, the cross isn't in 27 AD, but I'm just saying that this week is typifying that literal days of the week of Christ, of, of the days of the week, right? Does that make sense to people? So this maybe is a bit of a leap that I then made, but I did it because of this, I said, well, I can go back to 2014 and it's going to line up with the day after the resurrection. So that means 2015 would be the day of the resurrection. 2016 would be um, the day that Christ rested in the tomb. And 2017 would line up with the cross. Right? So it's going to line up with this Passover. And then I said, well, we're in 2018. At that time. And so in 2018, I think, well, 2019, that's the next year. And that's going to line up with the 12th day of the first month. Now, remember, the 12th day of the first month is the river Ahava. So these dates are symbols, right? And the river Ahava is where going to be where Miller counts the 490 years from the 12th day of the first month to the 12th day of the first month. So he's going to count from 457 to 33 AD. Incorrectly, right? Because he doesn't take into account there's no zero year. And so we can say this 12th day of the first month is significant. But what happens on the 12th day of the first month? Miller points it out. That's Judas' betrayal, right? So we got Judas' betrayal two days before the Passover. And so I said... This is Judas' betrayal. I made this prediction, right, at the School of the Prophets in a Vespers. So a Friday and a Saturday night Vespers. Bronwyn didn't publish 
uh, the Friday night one. I'd done the Saturday night one. And then the next day on Sunday, I asked her why she didn't publish it, the, the Friday night one. And I had a discussion with her, and then she posted it. So originally, they would have my the second one posted first on uh, the School of the Prophets YouTube page. Now they're all taken down. But, but these Week of Christ studies, this midst of the week, I'd made this prediction regarding 2019. Now, I was uncertain, though, in these, do I take the date in 27 AD and just transport it into our year? Or do I take the biblical date and convert it into a date in our year, right? You know, just like if you looked at this, um, that date we had there where we had the first day of the first month. So if I keep going, right, the first day of the first month over here is March 28th. And you can see that by, you know, just keep counting. You're just going to go from, if you counted from the April 3rd to March 20, April 13th to March 28th, that's going to be 18 days and, you know, in, inclusive. So this is going to come back to the first day of the first month. But in 2030, this is going to be April 5th. So I wasn't really sure what to do with this 2019 date. Here, it's going to be um, April 8th is going to be the 12th day of the first month, I think. I'm not sure yet. I think that's how it works. Someone wants to ask. Does that look right? What? Someone said, excuse me. Well, what I'm asking is that. Yeah. Okay. Is there any date that connects it with the second day of the first month? Okay. So here, all it did to come to 2014, I counted 633,840 days, right? So I'm just going to do a cardinal count back from October 22, 1844. Similar to what Stephen did, where he started with June 17, 31 AD. I'm going to have. 1,844 more days than he has. So technically, this date here is going to be 1,844 days that way, right? Because he put 1,844 days over on this side, got November 9th. I just put the 1,844 days on this side. I think. I think that's what I did. Yes, that's what I did. So I got it. I'm pretty sure that's what, how it works. Um, and so it just came up to the year 2014. That is, it's going to be 151 days, this, eight, this 17th day of the first month, which is April 13th. It's going to be 151 days before September 11th, 27 AD. So I'm counting 151 years this way. That's all I'm doing. So uh, does that answer your question? What was it brings some light? Okay, so I'm just telling you what I did. Whether I was doing things correctly or not, that that's to be determined. But I did make a prediction regarding Judas' betrayal, and I had different dates. I had April 8th. I thought maybe it could be April 18th in our calendar, because if you look at the 12th day of the first month in 2019 on our calendar, the biblical calendar related to our Gregorian calendar presently, it would be I think April 18th. So I, I said, well, Judas's betrayal is going to happen. But I didn't know what it would mean. I, I imagined somebody who had left the movement was going to betray the movement to the authorities, maybe similar to what happened with um, the Branch Davidians in, in, in 1993, something like that. But what actually happened is Jeff retires. Um, I believe his last day that he does anything, is, like any presentations, I think is April 7th. And April 8th is his first day of retirement. And Bronwyn and now is in charge of dealing with placing Parminder <clears throat> in charge of FFA. Because Jeff is in this camp meeting. He's going to 
hand the cloak over to Parminder, and now he's not going to do it. It's going to be Bronwyn. And Bronwyn, uh, I'm going to use the word colludes, just can't think of a better word, but she works with Par Parminder, and she had been working with Parminder behind the scenes. Now, she's going to regret her betrayal when she's in Germany, right? Just like Judas regret, regrets his betrayal. And I'm not saying that Bronwyn herself personally is Judas. I'm not trying to make that comparison. I'm just saying as a, as a parallel, it occurs in that history, right? So if, if we're going to look at that parallel, that happens on April 8th, 2019. So I didn't know about this until later, right? So I couldn't have known on April 8th that the Judas betrayal had happened. But I started to learn later that it had, had happened, and then I could say, well, this fits with what I had predicted. Now, one of the things that we are determined in all of this is that we can't predict events in the future, right? We can't time set. That is, we can't know what those events are. But we can look back at events that have happened and recognize that they're connected with time. Now, we have a date in the future, which is the first day of the first month in 2030. And that date, we're not predicting anything. We're saying that that date is symbolic. Now, some people have argued that we should predict something. But we've learned we can't predict things. And, and we don't even know if time is going to last that long, right? That's... We're, we're, not, we're not giving a peace and safety message that you got, well, it'd be like, you know, you got 2,400 and some days left until April 5th, 2030, so you got lots of time. We're not saying anything like that because we don't know what that date means. If anything, the events could happen much sooner. But that's what this week of Christ's study does. It gives us this information. So... Um, we're going to look at the rest of this. We're going to look at the implications of this. <clears throat> uh, in the study, on, on the last page of the study of the midst of the week, you're going to see it has first day of the first month, March 28th, and below 2030, fourth day, fifth month. So that's fourth or fourth month, fifth day. So that's going to be April 5th, 2030. And I don't have anything else written there. I don't have the second coming or anything. I just left it like that. I marked that the 12th day of the first month was April 8th. In 2019, it could be the 18th day of the fourth month. But we saw with the 70 AD that it gave us the same date. So we couldn't really tell from that, do we pick the date on our calendar? Do we pick that date? They both sort of line up. So... Hopefully that, that helps people understand why we have, in the first place, uh, this first day of the first month in 2030. And then tonight, I'm going to show you all of the things that have sh happened within the last year and a half in the understanding of this date, right? We've, we shared some of them, but we're going to look at it more closely. Why we think this, this date exists as a symbol, not as... A, a date to predict anything, that it exists as a symbol, okay? So, yeah? We can, we can also associate 2014 with 1888. Yeah, we can equate it because that's, that's going to be 126 shekels from 1888 to 2014. So they're tied together. But Parminder was predicting a Sunday law, which he couldn't do because, one is we can't predict time, but also he didn't really understand what line he was in. So we have this internal line that has been created partly from Parminder's time setting. So God is witness to this. And people have a hard time with this because they think, well, this is just the only way to do it. But this is what God has given us as light for our feet if we never gone down this path, we would never have this light for our feet. We wouldn't have seen any of these things. But God is, is such, um, 
an amazing creator that he could create things that are going to speak to us in such a small group as this movement is um, and, and also on the individual level. So he's going to give us these signs that he's leading us. But we need to understand them correctly because we're not giving a message of time setting. We're not going to predict some future event with this. We understand that it's telling us about now in this movement what God wants us to do. So, I mean, obviously righteousness by faith is 1888, but 1888 is also, as we learned, it's about, because A.T. Jones, he sees 1888, 1893, 1895 as all the time of the Sunday law. He sees that the mighty angel of Revelation 18 has come down in 1993, or 1893, right? We've seen that in our studies on the three angels' messages of righteousness by faith. Okay, so we're going to have, uh, we're going to close with prayer. We're going to have quite a long break until the studies later, right? So they're going to uh, commence when they usually do, but we don't have as many presentations this morning as we did during the week. We want a bit of a time to enjoy the Sabbath in fellowship and nature. Um, but I know some of you are going to have to watch these presentations tomorrow. So let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study of this, this afternoon. And thank you for the work that you are doing in our lives, in instructing us, and for this light that has come to this movement that we have to sort out. And I know, Lord, that there may need to be corrections in our understanding of these things. But we need to examine them and correct them. Please be with each person on this Sabbath in, that we may enjoy the fellowship and that we can uh, be strengthened spiritually and intellectually and continue to be with us and watch over us for the rest of these meetings. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.